guys, uh, welcome back. I just wanted to create a quick video on how to configure an easy UHF um, system to do pass RSSI in band to say a flight controller um, in the order of an AES32 or even an open pilot CC3D or Revo. Um, the advantage of having it in band is that uh, we can get RSSI readings from the flight controller and then ultimately pass them to um, an OSD such as um, the minimum OSD uh, with the appropriate code loaded on it and uh, that can be very handy. In my endeavour of trying to find how to configure the Easy OHF system to pass this, um, there's a lot of misinformation on there. So I've managed to get this working and I thought this would be um, a really quick way of showing people how to go ahead and uh, configure the system, uh, which is really quite simple. Uh, there's just a little bit of logic that needs to be applied. Um, I've configured, um, well not configured, I've actually plugged in my Easy UHF. I'm using an 8 channel um, light receiver and it's just a matter of uh, selecting the right COM port which I've got and the receiver. So we'll go over to first page isn't needed to do any of the configuration so we'll just head straight to the important page which is servo mapping and we'll do a read of that so that we get information from the receiver itself. This just takes a few seconds. Okay, it's read it. So the way to configure RSSI, and it's got a little bit of a blurb on the right hand side here, um, we just need to basically select RSSI, or in this case there's also an option to set select link. Um, there's a bit of debate. Some people say that link is better than RSSI. Um, however, I just find that uh, pushing link causes me a little bit of grief in that the um, value isn't displayed as neatly as RSSI even though it probably is a better uh, system to use but we'll go ahead just for this um, tutorial and just do the RSSI. Uh, what I've found is that we need to um, select channel 8 to pass well channel 8 and below to pass RSSI and what we'll do is in this case I'll just select channel 8 and select RSSI to be emitted. Now this is the PPM slot so this is the uh, slot that it's going to be modulated on or an equivalent of um, PCM channel 8 in essence and what we need to do is we need to pass this to our system. To do that we need to put channel 1 to be PPM muxed so in other words what that's telling us is that all 8 channels or in this case even 12 channels will be muxed on channel 1 of the server output. In other words, it'll be the first output on our 8 channel receiver. And then what I want to do is um, I'm going to select channel 4 um, and we could probably either select channel 3 or channel 4 which in my case uh, is equivalent to auxiliary 3 or auxiliary 4 say on a NAS board um, and we want to pass that to have PPM Eight. So in other words, what we've now done is matched PPM8, which is RS, uh, RSSI, and we've allocated it to channel 4. Um, now we've got 8 here twice, so what we have to do is keep the system happy, and I'll just put that to 4, and that's it. That's as simple as um, the configuration is going to get. Now we'll upload that to the receiver, and that will push it to the system. There we go, and it succeeded. Uh, and that's it. That's all there really is to doing the easy UHF configuration. One quick additional note that I wanted to mention was that um, in doing this uh, configuration, I've noticed that uh, the RSSI signal that's emitted to, um, say, the flight controller or a NACE board is actually inverted. And that's caused me a little bit of grief uh, because what happens is you'll find that the uh, signal when it's at 100% is actually mapped as 1000 milliseconds and when it's at 0% it's mapped at 2000 milliseconds. So in other words, um, everything's in reverse. From a NAS board that's you know, okay in that um, it, it's not really used to do anything on it, um, but in the minimum OSD what you can actually do is um, 
invert those figures so uh, it will allow you to read the minimum and the maximum allocate them appropriately to um, the RSSI value that's seen on the screen. Here is a screen capture of the Easy UHF providing RSSI on channel 4. So in the NAS receiver configuration what you need to do is set RSSI on auxiliary 4. There's a, a number of options uh, from disabled to 1, 2, 3 and 4 <coughs> which equates to those channel grips that I showed you before under the server output under the um, Easy UHF. And what we'll see here is that um, I've got everything powered on. So in other words, the receiver is um, talking to the transmitter and vice versa. Well, sorry, the transmitter is talking to the receiver. And what we'll find is um, that the auxiliary 4 channel is set to 1002. So if you recall at full um, RSSI, uh, the signal that was being presented was inverse, so we see it here at a thousand. Now what I'll do is I'll just move the transmitter away and you'll see that it'll actually go to the right, uh, which is opposite to what it should do. So you see it here, it's fluctuating a little bit. Um, the other thing that you can see on the NAS under the setup screen, uh, there is an RSSI output being shown. So here we have um, it outputting at about 50 to 57, and it's fluctuating, of course, as the signal strength is uh, fluctuating accordingly. <coughs> in this case, it's reasonably accurate in that it's shown the 50 mark, but um, as it got, as it would get closer to zero that would indicate that it's closer to actually 100% in this case and 100% over here would indicate we've got no signal from um, the transmitter to the receiver. So I hope that's um, clarified how to pass RSSI to a flight controller board. In this case um, I demonstrated on the NAS32 and uh, hopefully it clears up a lot of um, the misconceptions or lack of information that's out on the web there. Thanks for watching. Cheers.